A key piece of evidence against Sean Diddy Combs continues to be surrounded in mystery. In May, CNN exclusively released a damning video against the mogul. It showed him brutally grabbing, shoving, dragging, and kicking his former girlfriend Cassie in a hotel hallway. That brutal video matched allegations made by Cassie in her now-settled federal lawsuit, where she alleged Combs bought off the tape from hotel staffers for $50,000. Up until that point, Combs and his team has denied all the allegations made against him. However, the now-disgraced mogul was met with so much backlash, it prompted him to issue an apology. However, he didn't mention Cassie by name. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you got to do that. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. Truly sorry. Cassie's attorney released a statement in response to Combs's video after it was released, saying, quote, Combs's most recent statement is more about himself than the many people he has hurt. When Cassie and multiple other women came forward, he denied everything and suggested that his victims were looking for a payday. That he was only compelled to apologize once his repeated denials were proven false shows his pathetic desperation, and no one will be swayed by his disingenuous words, end quote. But the mystery surrounding who leaked the tape remains, even months after Combs was arrested and charged with sex trafficking, racketeering conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution, all of which he pleaded not guilty to. In recent court filings made by the prosecution, the government insists they weren't the ones who leaked the footage. According to the court documents filed on Wednesday, federal prosecutors wrote, quote, the defendant argues baselessly that the video depicting the defendant's assault of a victim at the Intercontinental Hotel in Los Angeles on March 5, 2016, was provided to a media outlet by government agents. Without any factual basis, the leak motion seeks to suppress highly probative evidence. A video of Combs brutally physically assaulting a victim in March 2016 that was published by a media outlet in May 2024 by claiming that it was grand jury material leaked by government agents to CNN. But as the defendant is fully aware, the video was not in the government's possession at the time of CNN's publication, and the government has never at any point obtained the video through grand jury process. According to the filing, the government didn't obtain the video until the entire world saw it on CNN, which was May 17, 2024. And prosecutors say prior to that date, the government had been unsuccessful in obtaining any video of the assault. But for the defense, they previously argued the leaks interfered with Diddy being able to get a fair trial. However, prosecutors urged the judge to reject Combs' request for an evidentiary hearing, saying it's nothing more than an attempt to toss out a damning piece of evidence against him. So is it possible federal agents may have leaked the assault video? According to the U.S. attorney's response, that defense argument was also baseless, as prosecutors say the agents who have no authority to issue grand jury process and they didn't secretly obtain the video. The government cited several media articles who didn't have clear sources about the potential leak. According According to the filing, it said, quote, where the sourcing is less clear, courts are reluctant to draw the conclusion that the defendant leaps to here, that anonymous sources close to or familiar with an investigation must be the personnel conducting the investigation. None of the news articles or the letter indicates that a government attorney or agent was the source of the information. And at least one explicitly states that the U.S. Attorney's Office and FBI representatives declines to comment. Even information in the cited articles sourced generally to law enforcement cannot meaningfully be linked to the prosecution team here. Prosecutors also called out Diddy's defense team and accused them of trying to hijack the mogul's criminal case from them by asking a judge to force his anonymous accusers to release their identity. The prosecution urged the judge to reject the request, saying the effort to reveal the names of potential witnesses is blatantly improper. 
The ongoing legal saga of Sean Diddy Combs doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. And part of the reason we're able to keep bringing you this story, plus so much more, is because of our great sponsors like Upside. So I want to take this time to thank Upside for sponsoring this story. If you're wondering what's Upside, well, it's a free app that gets you cash back on daily essentials like gas, grocery, and restaurants. Sometimes I only have time for a quick lunch break, but then there are times I can have a nice sit down at a restaurant and I can use Upside for both. Plus, I can use Upside to get cash back when I do. It's so easy and simple to use, and it's completely free, so why not? And it's actual real cash back, too. It's money that appears in your Upside app that you can transfer straight into your bank account. So here's what you do. You download the Upside app, claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You pay as usual using a debit or a credit card, follow the steps on the app, and get paid. You can use Upside at places like Chipotle, 7-Eleven, and so many other spots. So why not check it out to see if your favorite spot is on the app? To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen and use our promo code LCNews and get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. Again, that's promo code LCNews for an extra 25 cents back on your first gallon of gas. Combs' defense team also asked for a gag order to stop his accuser's lawyers from commenting publicly. But federal prosecutors have slammed that idea. In their filing, prosecutors wrote in part, quote, It is plain what the demand for a bill of particulars really is, a thinly veiled attempt to restrict the government's proof at this early stage of the case and to hijack the criminal proceedings so the defendant can respond to civil lawsuits. This demand should be squarely rejected, especially in light of the risk it poses to the witness safety. The judge overseeing Diddy's sex trafficking trial denied imposing a gag order this week. Instead, he wrote both sides are expected to abide by existing laws prohibiting lawyers, investigators, and government agents from revealing grand jury proceedings and relating non-public information that might interfere with a fair trial. Since Combs' arrest, he's faced a tsunami of civil lawsuits by several women and men alleging they were sexually assaulted by Combs, and the allegations span back nearly 30 years. But Combs' defense team has asked the accusers and their lawyers not to make public statements, saying they've already made numerous inflammatory extrajudicial statements aimed at assassinating Mr. Combs' character in the press. And more than a dozen lawsuits filed in Manhattan federal court have been assigned to different judges, meaning potential different rulings on whether allegations were sufficiently made. Just this week, a judge ruled a Tennessee woman who went by Jane Doe, who alleges the mogul raped her in 2004 when she was just 19 years old, must continue her case without anonymity or the suit will be dropped altogether. The judge wrote the defendants have a right to investigate those who sue them, and the public has a right to know who uses the courts. Now, as a cloud of mystery continues to surround who is the potential real source of the leaks of the case, it's possible we may never know. But it's likely that tape and even the subsequent apology video made by Combs will be key pieces of evidence in the Bad Boy Records founder's upcoming trial. Now let's bring on criminal defense attorney Safa Robinson to get her take on this ongoing mystery surrounding who leaked the video. Now, Safa, it's great to see you. As I mentioned, it truly is a mystery because at this point, we don't know who leaked that assault video. The prosecution denies it. Obviously, Diddy's team says it wasn't them. But what are your thoughts? You know, that is definitely a mystery and something up in the air that we may find the answer to, but we may not. You know, a part of what the defense is essentially trying to do here is say, hey, judge, you know, we understand that there was an order preventing disclosure of discovery outside of the transaction between the attorneys. And so what they're alleging is that the prosecution has disclosed this information to gain coverage media wise from different networks, put it out there in the public so that individuals who may potentially sit on this jury would have already seen it, essentially to taint the jury. And that's one of the things that we want to be careful of as we prepare or have eyes on trial. And what the defense is saying here is that the prosecution has somehow disclosed this video prior, even prior to the arrest and essentially in an attempt to taint any potential jurors. And that video was just horrific to watch. It was so brutal. And it felt like, like you had just mentioned, everyone in the world had seen that video. But it was also kind of a turning point in the case overall, because up until then, even though with the raids that had happened months before the video was released, um, Sean Diddy Combs' team was denied, denied, denied. That was kind of their method until that video came out, even prompting him to give an apology, even though he denied the allegations made against him in Cassie's civil suit, which, of course, we know was um, settled the next day. But what are your thoughts on just how that video came to light and just 
kind of a turning point it really made in the case of people kind of believing Diddy's alleged victims. Absolutely. That video set the catalyst for where we are today. That video was also the catalyst for a number of other individuals to begin to come forward with allegations of abuse and violence at the hands of Mr. Combs. You know, this video was disclosed, I think, a few months before he essentially was taken into custody. There is a good possibility that the government already had this video in their hands, which is also why the defense may be alleging that they were the ones to release it, especially if with this video, Mr. Combs allegedly paid to have this video in his possession and destroyed by other means. So there's a question as to who ultimately had the video and how that video got disclosed. But that video certainly set the catalyst for where we are today in part. Not only that, but it showed the abuse allegations. And one of the things the government is essentially going to want to do here is say that Mr. Cones was violent in nature, that he engaged in this sexual activity or also required individuals to participate in sexual activity against their will. And essentially this video may be a key piece of evidence that will ultimately show their, their theory in this case. And I wanted to get your opinion on, do you think it's at all possible that potentially Maybe a federal agent just leaked this video. I mean, the government denies it was even in their possession when CNN released it. Obviously, Diddy's team has denied that they released it. But what are your thoughts on the potential that maybe a federal agent did this? You know, anything is possible. And, you know, I've seen in my experience, unfortunately, when things of this nature get in the hands of law enforcement, unfortunately, sometimes it is inadvertently shown or disclosed to individuals whether that be one agent to another agent or someone that may work in their office. Um, people don't always act with the highest form of ethics. And so even showing family members or friends, this is a high profile case with two high profile individuals in that video. So it, it's very much sexy to the public to see something like this. And I hate to use that term because in no way are we you know, making light of that, but just to show the point that this is something that people are gonna wanna see people are gonna to wanna to know about. These are two individuals, Mr. Combs, we've known since the 90s, who has been a hip hop mogul, and Miss Ventura, who's a model, an actress, and a singer. These are two individuals that, you know, as Americans, we've seen in the music industry, we've grown to know, grown to learn about, and have enjoyed watching. And so that's the reason why something of this nature may ultimately be attractive to the public. And given that so many of the public did see that video, I want to go back to another point you made earlier. Do you think that Diddy can get a fair trial after everyone has seen just this video alone? That's going to be pretty tough. You know, there's an allegation of abuse and here we have it. it the video is as clear as day. Not only that, but we have Mr. Combs who follows up via social media with that video saying he apologizes, um, that he wasn't in the best frame of mind at that point in time, and that essentially there was no excuse for his behavior, essentially owning up to that video. So I think that this video certainly does damage to his reputation when there are going to be individuals that come in to sit as a juror or in the potential jury pool for this trial, they're going to be questioned on whether or not they've seen this video. And most, if not all of them may ultimately say yes, that they have seen this video. And one of the key things here is the judge and the attorneys are going to have to ask these potential jurors during that voir dire process is, can you still remain fair and impartial in making your decisions on this case? And it's going to be really important that these potential jurors are honest and can tell us whether or not they can be fair and impartial. And we talk, and when we talk about like in terms of evidence overall, what do you think is going to be more important to the prosecution's case? Is it going to be the evidence that we see, such as the video, such as the apology video, or is it going to be the witnesses themselves and giving their voice out to the jurors just about what they may have witnessed or what they have experienced um, in knowing Sean Diddy Combs? Both are going to be equally important. What people um, often don't know or realize is that when an individual is on the stand, stand testifying, their testimony is evidence and the jurors are going to weigh their credibility as they're testifying and hearing their story. And it's one thing to be captivated by a person's story and what happened to them, 
by listening to them. And then it's another thing for that to be coupled with the video that we saw that was displayed on TV of Ms. Ventura being attacked by Mr. Combs. So taking those two things hand in hand, you know, will certainly be a positive point for the prosecution in terms of them wanting to seek a conviction on this case. Um, it's certainly what we call corroborating evidence between what would be essentially probably her testimony because we still don't know who victim one is yet, um, but her testimony and that video together. And as we're hearing more people coming forward with lawsuits against Diddy and the government is hearing more testimony from witnesses in the grand jury proceeding, how likely and how potentially quickly could we see a superseding indictment in this case? That could happen at any point in time. This, this investigation has been ongoing. The indictment came out a couple months ago, you know, as they continue to investigate. And they've had certain evidence in their possession even prior to this indictment since earlier this year. There is a possibility that a superseding indictment can come, and it can come at any point in time. Grand jury proceedings are typically done in secret or are done in secret. And so there's never really a timeline as to when one would know if there's going to be a superseding indictment or an indictment in general. Yeah. And as we continue to hear more of allegations of Combs allegedly assaulting minors, men, women, as a criminal defense attorney, what type of defense does he have going for him at this point in time? You know, the defense is going to be pretty difficult here. I think that what his attorney essentially is going to have to do is take everything piece by piece, victim by victim. Right now, we're most more so focused on the criminal case. The civil cases sort of take a back seat to this, although they are ongoing. But right now, first things first is this criminal proceeding, um, this indictment, and ultimately, as a defense attorney, ensuring that Mr. Combs has a fair trial, that he's you know ultimately acquitted of these charges, although that might not be the case here. Um, but tackling each witness one by one, tackling each allegation one by one, and negating those things, I'm pretty sure, and I can't say for certain, but it would make sense that Mr. Combs' team has its own set of investigators to be able to assist in their own investigation of this case and dealing with witnesses and finding out and uncovering their own set of facts as they prepare for their defense at trial. And as we have six months until that trial is slated to begin, I expect we'll hear a lot more new stuff coming out until then. Safa, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it as always. But before we sign you off, anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Sean Combs has pleaded not guilty to federal charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution. And through his attorneys, he's denied all allegations of wrongdoing in the civil suits against him. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.